Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this neck. As you can see, I'm going to reproduce the same binding perfling thing that I made in the previous video. This pattern is even in the fretboard in light blocks. So, if you want to know how I made it, stay with me. This good is Variolet Paduc, and this is the fretboard blank. First, I'm going to hand plane the face which is going to be in contact with the neck. The other face is going to be machined in the CNC. Next, I'm going to reach out a 2 mm stick or a good veneer. This is to make the headstock plate and the fretboard inlays. Here, in the CNC, first I'm going to cut all the inlay material. These pieces are going to be the fretboard inlay blocks or live wood bindings. This one, the headstock logo. And those, the Avalon inlay blocks. For the Avalon inlay blocks black purfling, I'm going to use a new technique. I'm going to 3D print them. First, I need to model them in Fusion 360. Export this model in a STL file, and next, import the STL file in a slicing program. Here you can see the finished frame purfling binding thing. The only issue is that I have to square all the corners and edges by hand with a file. I'm a newbie in 3D printing. So, if anyone knows what parameter I have to modify to have sharper corners, please let me know. Here you can see them. I think it's an easy way to make different and elegant inlays. Now I can start machining the fretboard. First, I'm going to machine the fretboard inlay blocks or I wood pockets. And next, the one and a half millimeters per fling channel. Now I can glue the live wood blocks. I'm using epoxy. Next, I'm filling the porcelain channel with black epoxy. The next step is to route the Avalon blocks pockets. It's going to be where the Olaywood blocks are, leaving a 1mm thick frame. Here you can see more clearly what I'm talking about. Now I can glue the Avalon inlays, using epoxy again. With the 6mm bullnose bit, I'm going to cut the radius and clean all this mess. By the way, the radius I'm after is 12 inches.
Here you can see the inlay pattern. Next, it's time to cut the 22 fret slots. And finally, all the contour. I'm going to bind all the fretboard with one and a half millimeter thick olive wood strips. Here I'm cutting the olive wood bindings. Since there is epoxy on the edges of the fretboard, I can't use regular wood glue. So I'm going to use cyanoacrylate. Now it's time to prepare the neck blank. The central strip is Indian rosewood and the sides are wengi. First, I'm going to plane all the gluing surfaces. I like the whispering planing tongue this wengi has. Between the wood species, I'm going to use white black white pattern wood veneer. These veneers are 0.6 millimeters, and I think there are birch. The neck blank final dimensions are going to be 700 millimeters long, 90 millimeters wide, and 37 millimeters thick. Time to glue everything. As allocating pinks, I'm going to use long screws. I'm wiping with acetone the rosewood. Now I can throw the neck blank in the CNC. First I'm going to machine the fretboard face. Here I'm cutting the truss rod channel. Checking if the depth is correct. This program is for the 10 degrees headstock. Now I can flip the blank. The first cut is to establish the contour. And this cut is to rough all the neck contour. As I made in the last video in the guitar top, I'm going to smooth everything later by hand. The next thing I want to do is to fit the neck in the body. So I'm going to fine tune the tenon by hand. First I'm going to scrape the excess.
and next to cut the correct angle cheeks. And finally, the tenon thickness. Here I'm using a number 5 plane. Let's check for fit. As you have seen more of my videos, I like to square the truss rod channel. Here I'm drilling an 8mm truss rod axis. There is a little piece of rosewood that wants to chip out. Nothing that water thin CA glue couldn't fix. Now I can fit the truss rod with a little bit of persuasion. To prevent from rattling, I like to use filler strips. This one is from the same Indian rosewood. Removing the excess with a block plane. There is one millimeter that has to be removed from the front headstock. Same whispering here. The next is to machine the headstock plate. I machine the headstock logo, the same port fling, the tuning holes, the truss rod access. This time I'm not going to fill the headstock in light channel purfling with black epoxy. I'm going to try something a little different. Let's find if I can 3D print a headstock binding. So I have to model it in Fusion 360. Here you have it. Next I have to slice it and print it. Ok, let's find out if this was a good idea. A little bit of tweak. It fit like a glove. You can make headstock bindings with a 3D printer. To secure the binding I'm using water thin CA glue. and medium for the headstock logo. Now I can glue the headstock. To prevent from a slippage, I'm going to use a combination of wood and CA glue. And next, it's time for the fretboard. As a locating pins, I'm using 2mm nails. <coughs> I'm using acetone to wipe the two meeting surfaces. Ten millimeters headstock holes.
I'm going to send the radios up to 1000 grit. Since I'm going to use CA glue in the fretting process, I'm using paste wax to protect the fretboard. Here you can see the sanded headstock with the binding and the logo. I'm using Jumbo stainless steel frets. And finally, I'm going to finish carving the neck. I tried a lot of techniques, but for my way of working, the one I use now for me is the best by far. First, at the beginning and at the end of the neck, I establish the shape and the thickness I want. I do this task with a rasp. And next, the only thing I had to do is to connect the two shapes with a block plane. Long time ago, I used to do the same exact thing, but with a spoke shape. The problem is, spoke shapes tend to dish out the center. Block plane do not have this problem. Leaves a very straight neck with no problem and effort at all. Time to smooth the volute. Same thing with the neck heel transition. And finish sanding everything. Here you have it, the finished neck. Using the new techniques I've been learning these last months. Hope you enjoyed the video. If it's the case, don't forget to press thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, please subscribe and hit the bell. In the next video, I will do some finishing touches and the finishing process. Thank you for watching and see you soon.